We are the restaurant brokers and we sell restaurants. We started the nation's largest restaurant brokerage firm over a decade ago. Atlanta, Georgia was our starting point, but our brand is spreading nationwide. We define restaurant brokerage and help buyers just like these. Our dream, our goal, open up a restaurant, love and life, <laughs> serving people breakfast and lunch, and then enjoying the rest of the day with them and ourselves. Buying an existing restaurant, leasing a closed restaurant space, or purchasing a restaurant franchise. We help buyers satisfy their appetite for acquisition. I'm part of a husband and wife team with this fella. Working with my wife has been a lot of fun. The ultimate goal for everybody here is to make this work. And because we have different strengths, we bring different angles to the deal. The process begins with our powerhouse website, WeSellRestaurants.com, where buyers sign online confidentiality agreements and browse restaurants for sale. Then we send buyers undercover to check out a restaurant and decide if it's the right one for them. Buyers get our proprietary business analysis tool with all the financial details on the business for sale. After studying the restaurant inside and out, it's back to our office. We are deal makers. We write contracts and negotiate terms for buyers and sellers. That's why we sell more restaurants than any other firm in the nation. We are the restaurant brokers. Our name says it all. You're back on the air with Eric and Robin Gagnon. We are the restaurant brokers and we sell restaurants. Our firm is the industry leader in restaurants for sale, franchise restaurant resales, and site location for the food service industry. We are franchising nationwide. We currently have offices in Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, and Colorado. To learn more about our concept, visit us online at We Sell Restaurants. And we're back with the media influencers, a lot of bloggers here to, this, to, to our show today. Uh, we have Amy Riolo, Ari Laveau, and Matthew Robinson. We've been talking about blogging and restaurant critics. So uh, let's get back right into it. We had a very good first segment. So uh, I'd like to ask you guys now, uh, from a restaurateur perspective, how do we, you know, how would they get the best, uh, you know, from a relationship perspective, of course, reviews and things like that that you guys do? Uh, how would they best work with this new world of blogosphere, I guess? Uh, Matt, you want to get us started on that question? Sure. I mean, I can think of a lot of great ways that a restaurateur could engage uh, with a blogger. I mean, um, imagine if the, the restaurateur invited the bloggers in to do some co-creation saw their perspectives in action mm. because, you know, innovating as a team with them. You imagine a restaurant saying, you know what, this month we're highlighting bloggers ah. and the bloggers are going to be our co-chefs. We're going to close that gap between seeing it on the screen and actually tasting it in the restaurant. Very interesting. Exchanging ideas with them and not just partnering with them externally like an advertisement, but partnering with them internally. How would that blogger set the table? How would that blogger braise the meat? How would that blogger welcome people into the restaurant? Things like that. Real inspiration they could use to grow and, and change the way they do business. So maybe like better. a behind the scene kind of as well as the, yeah. the external front and back of the scene, I guess. Absolutely. Kind of Lots to learn from bloggers. Great. And uh, Ari, what do you think? Ari, Ari Well, um, you know, I'm kind of old fashioned, I guess. You know, um, since I'm a. A restaurant critic for the newspaper, and you know, I have very strict rules about you know not engaging with the restaurateur. Um, so you know, I I, uh, I look at Matthew's suggestion, very interesting, and um, but I have to wonder, you know, I mean, here we are in the wild, wild west again. <laughs> to use, that, use that analogy, but um, there, you know, where are the ethical uh, boundaries? You know, uh, where you know what are what should the rules be? You know, if if a restaurateur brings in a blogger and you know shows them a good time, you know that blogger is going to be um, more likely to um, to you know write something nice. That's just human nature. And and I'm not disagreeing with with Matthew because I think it, he raises some really interesting points. But I'm just kind of wondering how that could work. You know, uh, you know, so that we so that the blogger isn't essentially being bribed. Right. I think that's uh, a very valid point. Well, I really let me be the devil's advocate here. I say food critics, though, you don't really want the bloggers to become food critics. Ah, they're bloggers. They're not food critics. Isn't it like that, that line over there that you really don't want them to be kind of like what you are in, in one of your roles, since you have dual roles? <laughs> right. Well, uh, I, I don't really have dual roles in that my syndicated column is not about restaurants. It's just about cooking and, okay. 
and you know, I'll I'll tweet if you. So when I'm when I'm wearing my restaurant critic hat, uh, it's purely from a newspaper perspective. And do I feel threatened by bloggers? Um, not at the moment. I still have my job. I, I you know I still get to <laughs> go out and, and eat for free and write about it. And like I said, I use them. I use them a lot. I I you know um, if I'm checking out a restaurant. I'm going to make sure and, and go online and just see what people, what dishes people are raving about because I don't want to, you know, write a, write a column or uh, write a review about a restaurant and, and not mention the best dish on the menu, you know. So uh, we are a team, for sure, um, and I don't feel threatened by them. I'm, I'm glad they exist, uh, and I'm glad that uh, they don't have the same set of rules that I do because uh, it definitely allows me to... Uh, get some information that I wouldn't uh, otherwise be able to access. Okay. Amy, what are your thoughts? Well, I have two separate ideas. One is kind of a little bit more grassroots that's proven and it's worked, and the other one is more of a business strategy. Um, the first one, some of the events, some of the organizations that I belong to that are culinary-based have different kind of partnerships with restaurants where, for example, a lot of people are very interested in social media, but maybe all the people in these organizations aren't used to them or they have a particular bloggers group within the organization. So a restaurant will host that bloggers group or that particular organization to open up an event to anybody who's interested in learning more either about the new trends in blogging or social media or, um, you know, changing things with technology. And then they can go to the event. The chef will create special dishes for them, interact with them, and they can host their event in the restaurant. So it creates kind of like a, a nice environment for the bloggers or for the people who are interested in social media, but at the same time, um, it lets the, the chef kind of showcase what they would like to do and what they'd like to be known about. So that, I've seen that happen, and that's very effective. The other idea is normally in restaurants, how they're run um, is a lot of them have PR companies that represent them, and they also have people who do their social media, and they're usually separate. Sometimes in the smaller restaurants, they're the same, and sometimes in the mom and pop shops, it's a son or a daughter or a cousin or an uncle that's taking care of this, but often people do wear these hats. So within the PR realm, a lot of the, the uh, public relations agents will have on their roster different food bloggers to kind of reach out to so that if the restaurant has an event, if the restaurant has a new book, they're made aware of it that way or any new philosophy. And so restaurateurs can tell if they don't already do that, their PR person, you know, I'd like the top food bloggers to be on that list to get all of my press releases or to be invited to an event. Um, and also for the social media people, whoever's doing the social media for a particular restaurant should be looking at who the top bloggers are in the area or who are the experts on that niche type of cuisine and be inviting them to the restaurant or be at least interacting with them online. I love all of those ideas. Now, we are talking today about how that virtual world intersects with the real world of restaurateurs, and I don't want to let you guys go off the air without each one of you giving us a way that we can go in and read your blog because we have a lot of foodies and would-be restaurateurs and restaurateurs. So quickly, go ahead, Amy, tell us how you can be found online. What's your blog? Sure. It's Amy Riolo. That's spelled A-M-Y-R-I-O-L-O dot blogspot dot com. Perfect. And Matthew? Yes. Uh, I My blog is on the Culinary Exchange. It's at the culinaryexchange.net backslash blog. Okay. And Ari, how Ari. Can, Ari, how can we find your um, your uh, reviews? Well, my reviews are available at uh, www.alibi.com. And I guess those are those are the writings of mine that you're probably most interested in. But uh, if people are interested in my blog, it's flashinthepan.net. Love that. Great ideas, great information today from uh, bloggers and critics, those who are media influencers in the restaurant industry. This is Eric and Robin Gagnon. Each week, we work to satisfy your appetite for acquisition, feed the need for restaurant reality, and serve up a recipe for business success. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. Eric and I will take a look at restaurant reality. Thank you.